annual releases. They used to be way more prominent back in the day, but now there's not that many that dominate the gaming industry. Also, franchises that release games every year are usually divisive in the gaming community. Some love them because they get to experience something new, whether it's a roster update or a new story with some adjustments to the gameplay that they know and love. Others, well, they think it's bad for gaming. And because they release them yearly, they make other publishers pressure developers to do the same thing and as a result, we get trash games from great developers. I think I'm somewhere in the middle, especially because most annual series have multiple developers working on different games and they put their unique spin on it. But I can also see the other side, because we all know that there are some franchises that if they had another year of development, they would be better off for it. So today we're going to dive into gamers best and worst annual franchises and see who comes out on top. And you might be surprised to see some of the series in this video. So quick info, I believe if a series has released a game five years in a row, it was an annual franchise. And not allow one year gap to happen after a long streak. And I'm also counting remasters and remakes and spinoff games because we're in the game era where it's kind of expensive to see them nowadays. They come out a lot. So now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. Let's talk about one of the OGs in the game. Mario. To this day, there is at least one new Mario game coming out every year. But of course in the main series games, they have large gaps in between them, but in between the main adventures, Mario will be going to parties, playing different sports, kart racing, and even just beating up other gaming franchises. Nintendo won't let this man rest, but looking through the list of releases, you can see that the quality for the most part is always there. A lot of the spin-off games use the review just as well as the mainline game. So it's hard to be upset Nintendo for putting out a new one every year. It's definitely working out. Sticking in the RAM as the OGs, did you know that Pac-Man was still an annual franchise? Me either. Until I was researching this video, and I have one question. Why? And how? Let's see some releases. We got Pac-Man Repack. Okay, that's a remake of a classic game. Pac-Man Battle Royale Championship? And it's a sequel? They had a Battle Royale in 2011? Jesus. Pac-Man Museum Plus? Old games put on new platform makes sense. Pac-Man 99, that's a Tetris 99 clone, another Battle Royale. Ooh, they got a Stadia exclusive Pac-Man? No wonder the Stadia is dead. And if I keep going, you can see more and more of them releasing the same games from the past or just bad mobile games that no one really wants. But what choice does Namco have? Let's be honest. Gotta keep that yellow round orb thing alive, I guess. Let's change gears a bit. And because I don't want to spend a ton of time on sports games, I'm going to put them all together. Sports games come out every year and they are not the worst, I guess? The NBA 2K series is huge and sells well every year, but it's a stagnant series for a lot of players and content creators. Why? I think it's a lack of innovation, weird and unnecessary gameplay changes, updates that are either too late or too far and few between. You know it's kind of bad when your content creator starts to pivot to something else. I'm an NBA fan, but I just can't get into these games because they feel and they are just a huge money grab especially when every sports game has virtual currency and has their own version of Madden's Ultimate Team game mode. Speaking of Madden, Madden looks like it's in a horrible state right now. People are really upset with the lack of change, polish, and funnily enough, this one throw is causing mental trauma on the internet. It's hilarious. Nigga, what the f**k? Nigga, hold on, boy, what the f**k? Alright, I've seen enough. I knew exactly what it was going to be when we started laying sideways. R.I.P. to every controller when this game is released. Man, it's not for me, but I know the feeling when a game you love is slowly killing itself, and Man has been doing that for years. But hey, them new shiny Ultimate Team cards will be there day one. You can get you a pink diamond, a, a rose, gold, whatever they are. FIFA, or I guess that we call EA Sports Football Club? Thank God they're just gonna call it FC, cause that's still a trash name, I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, FIFA is the same as the previous two. Wildly popular, so there is no real need for any real changes, except their name, because FIFA snatched it back like TI and ATL. Bet you had a nice little laugh about this, huh? Give me back my Netflix! I think most sports developers and publishers are on don't fix it if it ain't broken timing, and it's really unfortunate. Tiger Woods, PGA, NHL, MLB, all of them fall in line with the same philosophies as the other sports games. And if you love sports games, you really don't have a choice but to suck it up and go buy it. Or vote with your wallet. Don't buy the game and changes will be made. The only way you'll get them to move is if they actually lose the money. But who am I? I'm just a man on the internet with a cheap avatar talking about games. Who cares? Another sports game is WWE. Well, it's not really a sport. I used to think it was back in the day. Man, watch out. 
WWE games, the only time they had a hiatus was when this game came out. <laughs> Yeah, that was a disaster. I was a big fan of WWF as a kid, had toys and all, but as I got older and found out it was all fake, similar to finding out that Santa wasn't real, my entire reality was destroyed. Well, honestly, I just said eh, and turned on my PS2 and just kept playing WWE games. Because while I definitely stopped watching it, I definitely kept playing them games. From No Mercy to SmackDown vs Raw, I was always coming back for more. WWE games are fun games to just create a disgusting looking character and have them beat up the entire WWE roster in career mode. Well, unless you meet The Undertaker and have to fight them in a casket match. It's a bad clip! It's a bad clip! It's not a good clip! It's not a good clip! No! No way, no! Only recently, when 2K acquired the license from a bankrupt THQ, the series became, well, worse. Luckily, after the disaster that was WWE 2K20, they seem to be in a relatively good spot, but I still hold the previous generation games in my heart. Music games definitely had their time in the sun. They released so many different versions in a short period of time, it was inevitable that the genre would crash and burn. Games like SingStar, which basically was just karaoke, Dance Dance Revolution, which had people thinking they could dance in real life, and had Mario characters moving in ways that I never wanted to see. Just Dance games that I still pump on that releases yearly, but did you know that they were still releasing Just Dance games on the Wii, the very first Wii, until Just Dance 2020? That's kinda wild. Ubisoft really understood their market, huh? But two music franchises that I really want to talk about that dominated two generations of consoles were Guitar Hero and Rock Band. I remember all the plastic guitars being found everywhere and seeing different celebrities on TV act like they were having the time of their lives. It was a special era where music and games shook hands and came together to make these special games. Only one slight problem, they released too many too fast. In one year, Guitar Hero had not one, not two, not three, not four, but six games in one year. Guitar Hero started before the digital gaming era we're currently in, so to keep the game alive, I guess they kept releasing games with more songs, some more focused around one band, but the constant shoving of games down our throat was a bit too much. But then, the PS3 and the Xbox 360 came out and Rock Band dominated by having a full band. I love the drums and a quick fact about me, playing the drums of Rock Band got me a spot on my school drum line. The more you know. Rock Band had the advantage of releasing new songs digitally and they were able to build a library of songs that's crazy to think about. Unfortunately, they also fell into the trap of releasing standalone track packs and specific band focused editions and it started to become too much. Rock Band, just like its predecessor, slowly fell into obscurity and it's kinda his own fault. But the fun that both series gave families and friends will forever be precious. Kirby was also an annual franchise which didn't surprise me. I remember seeing Nightmare in Dreamland releasing every two years it feels like. Dragon Ball and Sword Online, two popular anime that release games yearly. Luckily, more care is put into the Dragon Ball games nowadays, but other anime games like Sword Online need some more time in the oven. And I'm sorry if I butcher this title, I, don't, I never knew how to pronounce it. The Enlier series, I think I got that right, releases yearly, which is a beloved niche Japanese RPG. It seems like every time I open up Steam, I see a new one. Digimon and Pokemon were coming out new games every year. Pokemon games in the beginning for me were fun, but they became stale over time. Until the latest release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but I reviewed that game and it needed more time in the oven. Digimon games try everything and they are kinda mediocre in comparison, but they still found a way to pump them out. Whether you wanted to be trapped in a digital world or catch them all, every year you had something to play. Two series that go together but don't really get mentioned enough for being annual games are Star Wars games and Lego games. Star Wars games, whether they were unique original story experiences, licensed movie games, or whatever this was, Star Wars has continued to release games with many different developers, including LEGO. When LEGO Star Wars came out, I remember it being huge. It rapidly became the standard and formula for LEGO games going forward. The LEGO games humor and co-op gameplay still hold up to this day. Like as long as LEGO is the first word in the title, they probably made a game about it. Lego Creator, Lego Technic Cybermaster? What the hell does that mean? Lego Loco, Lego Racer, Lego Friends. 
Capcom, they've done it all. Even though now they mostly make LEGO games for different movie and TV licenses, they continue to produce similar and fun games that all ages enjoy. The Tales of series was annual until it became very, very repetitive and stale, and they took time to release the fantastic Tales of Wrath. More people should play that game. SpongeBob releases a lot of mid and trash games yearly, but Battle for King Bottom is still good though. What surprised me the most about doing research is that technically, especially in America, the Yakuza series is an annual franchise. Now that I think about it, it makes sense. The city of Kamurocho was used and is still used in almost every game, so no need to stress over creating a brand new open world from scratch. The combat is subtle enough that they build and added more mechanics on top of it so it never really had to change until it went turn based. So the main focus would have been telling the new story and animated cutscenes, which is a lot of work, but nowhere near the amount of work it could be. And with this new knowledge that I received, Yakuza might be my favorite annual series. Huh, we'll see. But now we've arrived at the big boys that everyone know and love or hate. Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, at one point Monster Hunter, and Final Fantasy. All completely different, but they kept pumping out titles. Some better than others. Call of Duty's dominance cannot be understated. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare changed gaming entirely. The slew of first person generic shooters that came out afterwards from different developers can be traced back to Call of Duty. And not to mention, during that time, they were on a hot streak. Started with Call of Duty World at War, which introduced zombies to the franchise, and ending with Black Ops 2, which a lot of people say was the peak for the multiplayer. That means for six years, I'm gonna say it again, six years, they released beloved classics. That's a Jordan LeBron type run. And they were releasing games on almost every platform. And well, the versions of other platforms like the Wii and 3DS, they weren't nowhere near as good as PlayStation and Xboxes, but people weren't really playing them anyway. They were playing the main version, which was 360, PS3, PS4, etc. Then the series became stagnant until recently with the remake of Modern Warfare. That's when they decided to change it up, for better or worse. Call of Duty right now is a very divisive community. It's split between people preferring old three lane maps with no skill matchmaking and people who, who have the open, more battlefield like maps and match with people of similar skill level. I prefer the latter, you know, but it is what it is. I know things can't stay the same forever. Then we have Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed came out with a new experience combining stealth with history with a futuristic twist. And with the first one doing decent enough, people kept their eyes open for a sequel. And when Assassin's Creed 2 came out and it was overwhelmingly beloved, Ubisoft just kept pumping them out every year. Ubisoft is good at burning fans up. I love Assassin's Creed games. From the parkour to the huge detailed cities and interacting with different historical figures, Assassin's Creed nailed it early on. Then, the curse of annual releases came in and built up to Assassin's Creed Unity. And it was a disaster, like really bad. And it was the breaking point for most people who were already getting tired of the series. Luckily, they took a break and had a resurgence, but the damage was done. Every annual series goes through a stale period and good developers change it up. Ubisoft is somewhere in the middle, to be honest. People are tired of looking at maps, huge maps, and seeing hundreds of icons. It's exhausting. Capcom's Monster Hunter series since the first release came out annually and fans ate it up. I played the first one on PS2 as a kid and I didn't really like it. Then, many years later, I played Monster Hunter World and became a fan. I didn't know that so many came out consistently. Including spin-off, this series is very consistent with its quality. Though that may be because you fight a lot of the same monsters in different games and they add new ones on top of it, but they do it well. You might hear some complaints about the new Monster Hunter games having less monsters than the old ones, but I believe the way they modernized the series in the PS4 generation brought more casuals like me and brought a ton of money in as well. Finally, we have Final Fantasy, who had a streak of amazing games, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I guess 10 even though I'm not a fan. And then there's a period of time on PS3 and Xbox 360 where it was just ugh. Three different parts of Final Fantasy 13, and they lost a lot of fans, especially since they made it more confusing by adding time travel and more boring characters. The games aren't bad, but they're just painfully missing the quality that the previous games had. Final Fantasy usually changes style and gameplay every console generation, but man, the PS3 era was rough. But Final Fantasy has so many great games, it's hard to deny that they deserve all the praise that they get. But they also have just as many bad games when you include spin-offs. So every time there's a 50-50 chance that you might get heat, 
or garbage, but I still love this series. Now personally, to wrap this all up, if I had to choose which series are above the rest, I think it's fairly obvious. Mario, Yakuza, Lego, and I have to say to this day, even though it's divisive, Call of Duty. They still put out so many quality games to this day. I think these four series are the best and they are definitely in a higher tier compared to everyone else. But that is what I think. What do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts, especially if you made it this far. I'll see y'all next week and thanks for stopping by.